Hello everyone, welcome to Credential Up Houston. My name is Margaret Ford Fisher. In 2018, the University of Houston was selected to become headquarters for the inter-university program on Latino research. The program had been hosted by other universities such as Stanford University, the University of Texas at Austin, the University of Notre Dame, the University of Illinois, Chicago, and Hunter College. We are pleased that the consortium is now headquartered in Houston for a five-year period and equally pleased to visit with the executive director of the program, who is also director of the Center for Mexican American Studies and professor of sociology at the University of Houston. Today, we will talk about the three combined areas, the consortium, the Center for Mexican American Studies, and the field of sociology and how students are being equipped to address the societal issues that emerge. Our guest is Dr. Pamela Ann Kuros. Dr. Kuros, thank you so very much for joining us. We are so delighted that you are here. I'm delighted to be here and thank you for asking me. Absolutely, and congratulations also on your role in bringing the consortium to the university. That is really outstanding. And I'd like for you to tell us about the role and purpose of the National Consortium, please. The consortium was created in 1982, and uh, it was unique back then. It was created and designed so that research, uh, the purpose was basically for the leading research institutions to help develop the Latino intellectual presence in the United States. And um, this very broadly defined has incorporated uh, student seminars, workshops of all kinds, and of course, research. And one of the hallmarks of the consortium was to create working collaboratives so that uh, grant funding went to those universities or member institutions that worked together on research projects. And of course, when it began, there were just four universities and it's developed over the years. And I'm pleased to say I was one of the first graduate students, <laughs> which also says something about my age, I guess, uh, to participate in its first seminar, um, along with another Texan, Angela Valenzuela, who is at the University of Texas, Austin. I met Angela there and uh, never anticipated becoming the executive director, but it's, it's held a place in my heart for a long time because of what it did for me as a student and as a professor. And so we're hoping it can do that for, for lots of people. Well, of course, and I'm pretty confident that it will. I have read quite a lot about you and a lot of the articles that you have written and that have been refereed in various uh, journals and published, and it's really very impressive. And I'm wondering, as you look at the work that you're going to do now, starting back in 2018 with the consortium. What are some of the research initiatives that are underway and what are some of the research initiatives that you have in mind? We take our initiatives from our membership. So we have applications each year and then we select, um, the board of directors selects the uh, applicants, and the award, awardees. And of course, this last year, the obvious uh, topic was COVID. Uh, we're very interested in that, and there's extensive research being done on Latinos. So, of course, that's another set of responsibilities that we feel that we have to do this research um, in order to understand what the impact has been on our communities. And I say communities because, as you know, Latino is a pan-ethnic term. So, um, we have lots of folks in different parts of the country, and they're affected differently. And so we have three of these initiatives out right now. And uh, we'll, we'll be looking forward to seeing what, what they reveal. Very interesting. Have, so COVID is one of the initiatives. What are the others? We're known for uh, about 12 areas of research. And uh, obviously immigration, border studies, language acquisition, education, and family are some of these. And some of the more recent and emerging are um, disaster research. I think we all can see why that has emerged. And of course, the, uh, the visual art has, um, in some ways, the consortium is, is 
really identified with the visual art. So the humanities, digital humanities is another area that um, we're beginning to explore. And with Dr. Canelo's uh, Center for Latino Digital Humanities now being funded by the Mellon Foundation, we're hoping we can work together and, and really promote the growth of that area as well. Of course, with Arte de Publico, yes. I think that is just really very exciting and the work that um, has been done there for many years has been absolutely uh, incredible, very, very impressive. So there was an art initiative as well. So tell us about that. About 15 years ago, something known as Latino Art Now, what is now the moniker of this um, national event, it was a conference. And over time, it sort of morphed into um, an event. And I say that because my predecessor uh, in Chicago decided she needed to include the community of artists, not of, you know, but what to some of us would seem like a no-brainer. It just sometimes <laughs> in academia, it takes us a while to get there. Uh, and so I was so impressed with what she did. I thought I wanted to do that as well. And I nominated Houston when uh, the board of directors was thinking about the next site. Uh, I said, well, why not Houston? Not really, to be honest, not really anticipating that folks would say, oh, sure. Uh, because there were a few other cities that had um, been considered as well, Miami, Los Angeles, uh, San Antonio. And they decided to bring it to Houston, which I was very, very pleased because, you know, we have wonderful Latino artists here. We have lots of wonderful artists of color, but they don't always um, have the support and the infrastructure to promote the art. And so I was really hoping that this would be uh, serve as a catalyst to help participate in, the, in that effort. And uh, we put on a four month uh, event with 70 participating organizations. Uh, it was not what I had anticipated, but the response just grew and grew. And it ended up being really quite, I think quite an excellent uh, set of events. So we're really proud of that. And I hope that it's done something uh, for the community. It's also um, stimulated some more research because to be honest with you, I didn't want to just bring the event and have people say, oh yeah, that was a great event. I also wanted to have something lasting from this. So we're in the process right now of working on a portable and bilingual digital interactive digital board that features Latinos, um, the visual Latino art of Houston. And of course, as one funder said, gee, I'm not sure now's the time, but this began a long time before COVID. So it's going to be done. It, it will be completed within the next couple of months, but we're gonna hold off on presenting it to the public until it's safe and we return to whatever the new normal is. But I think it's going to be, uh, I think folks are going to be excited by it. I certainly agree with you and all of what you're doing uh, that enriches the community in so many ways. And we have quite a substantial community of artists as well. So I'm sure that they are really very, very appreciative. So Dr. Quiroz, we're going to take a break right now. And when we return, we will discuss how the Center for Latino Research will help to advance the work of the Center of Mexican American Studies. So please stay with us. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kiss them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. 
Welcome to HTC. Let me teach you. Let me help you get college credits. Let me train you for a new career. Let me change your life. Come learn with us. HCC, for everyone, anytime, anyway. Welcome back to Credential Lab Houston in our discussion with Dr. Pamela A. Quiros. Dr. Quiros, how does the mission of the National Consortium for Latino Research align with the role of the Center for Mexican American Studies? Its purpose is to support the infrastructure of um, all the centers to help develop an infrastructure so that research can be done on the issues that impact Latino communities across the country. Um, needless to say, CMOS uh, is also interested in that. There are three uh, components to the center. One is research, one is instructional, and I embed the Academic Achievers Program in that, which I believe is really what the center has been known for in the last uh, couple of decades. And then the third component is community service. Um, so the three components, and, and I admit that I came hoping to build the research aspect of the center because we knew we have this award-winning uh, academic achievers program that everybody knows, and it's been around for a long time, and it's, it's excellent. Um, but we needed to, I felt, align with the university, which is now a research level one institution. And that means uh, trying to examine some of the very important issues that unfortunately too often don't end up being examined. And so that's, I think the two fit very well because of course it's centers and institutes like CMOS that are members of this consortium. So when I came to the University of Houston, I um, asked the provost to support us in belonging and she has been fantastic. So we joined the membership and then two years later, they were looking for a headquarters and I said, why not Houston, right? And uh, they agreed. So it's been great for the university. I think it, I hope it will be great for the uh, community but it helps CMOS as well because they're synergistic. And it provides those opportunities for students across the board for the most part, whether they are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, or seniors, it really does not matter. And also for those students who are working on their doctoral programs as well in sociology and conducting various research and of course PhD program also. So you know, this is really very, very impressive because as I was reading in preparation for our interview, I saw that in 1972, the University of Houston Center for Mexican American Studies partnered with Stephen F. Austin High School. And the focus of that partnership was to help students achieve academic standing, high school graduation and college enrollment. Mm -hmm. Certainly that aligns directly with all of the work that you're doing with the center as well as with the consortium. So tell us about the success of that, of that partnership over the years with Stephen F. Austin, please. This is called the Academic Achievers Program as well, right. and it's at Austin. And it, it's hard to believe. I am a, a, a researcher to my core. And when I saw the numbers, I said, check it again. And then I said, check it again. So we had, uh, I really couldn't believe the incredible success of this program. It has a 100% retention rate. That's why I said check the numbers. I probably would have said it if it had even been 90%. Um, and what makes this all the more compelling is that when we create these cohorts every four years, we don't say give us your top students. We're not, in that sense, we're not looking for the top students. We're looking for students who are willing to devote themselves and commit to getting tutored every day, to workshops, to participation that we believe, and, and we've shown, I think, uh, help students to, to navigate education and to enter college. So to have that 100% retention rate, it's certainly not of my doing. It's, it's the work of two women that I have to name because I have the 
pleasure and the privilege of sitting here and making it sound as though, oh, it's all me. It isn't. It's this incredible staff uh, that, and it's a collective effort. It's absolutely, they're young, and I, I mean really young. I am so old, I'm, you know, the mother of all of them. Uh, and they're energetic, devoted, committed, which is what it takes. But the two women who have ushered this program through the decades are uh, Rebecca Trevino, who recently retired. She's been retired for a year. And now uh, Feli Aguilar. Now Feli was the director of the Austin High School program, and she's now directing all of it. Uh, but their dedication is, they're just inspiring. I, I can't say enough about both of them. The students love them. They know they care about them. and. You know, that's, that's really such an essential part of the success of this thing. You know, I can tell you all about the structure of it, but the heart and soul of it are these people who commit themselves, as we know so many people do, and we're grateful. Of course. I could not agree with you more about the success of the students. And of course, I want to, to indicate as well that the Houston Community College has had a longstanding relationship with Stephen F. Austin. Uh, high school, as well as many other schools in our district as well for dual credits. And many of the schools are STEM academies. And the students, for the most part, do extraordinarily well. And by the time they graduate from high school, they have their associate's degree in many instances and are ready to go on to the university level. You know, and connected with that in reading about you, just very, very impressive. I saw two of the articles that I wanted to connect to your work as well as a sociologist. And one of the articles is School as a Solution to the Problem of Urban Place that you published in 2014. And the other one was uh, The Silencing of Latino Student Voices. Could you give us just a summation of both of those in the findings from those works before we go to the next break, please? Well, the silencing of Latino student voice was uh, an ethnography that I, I did in uh, the city of Chicago at a, at a particular school. It was very unfortunate to see how the students over time actually lost their enthusiasm, lost their belief, and in many respects, the school and its actors in it uh, participated in this process inadvertently in some cases and explicitly in others. Uh, very much the typical story of, of unfortunately how our young people, uh, they don't know how to navigate, they don't have a history of that, and they're not getting it so often in our schools. And yet at the same time, we're expecting our schools to do so much more than we used to do. Uh, that as I watched these young people over time, by the time they were juniors in high school, they had essentially their hopes and dreams had evaporated. And uh, dampened aspirations is an uh, uh, exaggeration. They went from, you know, entering the school and wanting to, to have futures, uh, the American dream, essentially. And by the time they're juniors, you know, it's well if I graduate or, and, and it was, I felt that it was largely a set of uh, processes that occur in school that fail our children. Frankly, it's not just Latino children. It certainly happens in other schools. Um, the joy of being in this other school and writing um, this story is that it is just an incredible experiment where a former sociology PhD student dropped out, decided she's going to open a school. And she, and it, so it was part of the panoply of, of school reform that existed in Chicago but it was such a successful uh, situation in many respects. The children were, were essentially bused from one of the lowest uh, income areas in Chicago to one of the highest income areas. 
not to be integrated with other students, but to partake of this educational experience in this incredible facility that the director um, rented. And what I was interested in, it was the first time I had dealt with children that young. And I don't want to say research them because we worked with them and we included uh, the children. They were eight, nine years old in the research. But what was an incredible academic success verged on, I mean, it, it created problems that I think were unforeseen, which was a disconnect from the community, uh, a negative view of the community. And this is the dilemma that so many of us, you know, from underrepresented groups have. We want to give our children all kinds of opportunities and we don't, and we have to navigate all these unforeseen issues that they will have. And so as part of this process, I became very interested in, in the notion of migrating students, school reform, and how we take our children out of the neighborhood. And what does it do to that connection that we have to our communities, which is on to ourselves as well. And I think that's critically important. And it is unfortunate that we must take a break right now, but we'd like to continue that uh, conversation, Dr. Kudros. And so next segment, we'll focus on the issues that you're addressing, plus the social justice issues and how students via their studies can become more involved. So please stay with us. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy, and busy people can't have prediabetes. Oh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. Your blood pressure numbers could change your life. Talk to your doctor about creating a plan that works better for you. Start taking the right steps at manageyourbp.org. Now I'm, you know, trying to get better, stronger than ever. The faculty at HCC represents the best of the city. They're committed to getting our students to their goals. A four-year degree. Workforce training. A better life. HCC, for everyone, anytime, any way. Welcome back to Credential Up Houston. We are continuing our discussion with Dr. Pamela A. Piros, director of the University of Houston Center for Mexican-American Studies and the Executive Director of the Inter-University Program on Latino Research. Dr. Kiros, in the previous segment, we were talking about the findings from your research. And what I'd like to ask you to do um, is to share with us how you see the findings from that study connecting to what you do here as leader of your programs and professor of sociology as we work with incoming students. For me, the goal of the research that we do, the teaching that we do, whether we're in the classroom, in the AAP program, in the community, is to give our young people the analytic tools to understand, to, to view the world differently, to understand it differently, and to imagine it differently. We don't just want to look at things. We want to change, well, I want to change the world and I want our young people to feel that they can change the world, that they have a place in the world and that, um, that they deserve certain things and that they also have an obligation to their fellow man. And to make the world a better place, I think that's what it's all about. And regardless of what we 
I mean, this is, I'm going to hand you a very personal bias of mine, which is, I think everything comes back to educating our children. Uh, and you hear a lot of rhetoric, particularly around campaign time, but too often we fail our, our young people. We don't walk the walk. We don't, this rhetoric is not ending up being reflected in our policies. And if we don't educate our young folks to sit at the table, to be at the table, they will end up serving at that table. They and will end up serving at that table. table. You are absolutely right. And that education that you're speaking of is critically important. Very briefly, how do you prepare the students to address the social justice problems of housing? And as we look at the employment and education and so forth, how do you prepare them to address those social justice problems? And then I'd like to get the contact information for students who are interested in enrolling in your program at the University of Houston. So could you share that with us, please? We have a minor and we just had our major approved by the provost, so that's now in process. And part of that, but part of what any of us teach, whether it's in uh, Mexican American and Latino studies or sociology, are the tools for doing this. Uh, in academia, we call it engaged research, um, so that they're participating. Uh, I've published with undergraduate students. I've published with graduate students. That's my job. And part of that is teaching them how to do things. I don't have to teach them the questions. They have the questions. It's how to look at these things and how to examine uh, the world critically. And that's, I think that's the, the word, the key word there is critically and to give them the tools to do that. And um, in fact, this digital board that we are creating is done with students. It's just a phenomenal uh, experience. It's the best experience I've had. I've, I've uh, worked with lots of colleagues at lots of different <laughs> And I love working with the students on, on these projects. That's so great. The that they see from us and that they yes. bring to it. We feed each other. And, um, you know, specifically in terms of how we do it, well, we have so many different folks who use different approaches, and they're all good. But the, the end point is to give them these skills, to tell them they matter, to let them know and expect that they deserve to be at that table. And to and make they it do. A, a better place for other people, all people, to be at that table with them. Of course, and we have about 30 seconds remaining. Is there contact information that you would like to share for students who would like to become more engaged in research and working with the center? I think it's www.uh slash class slash CMOS. And all of the information is on our website. Um, that's the best way uh, to do it. We, we have all the information about the Academic Achievers programs, about the research. I welcome folks to call me, um, send me an email, P-A-Q-U-I-R-O-Z at U-H dot E-D-U. Excellent, Dr. Quiros. This has been marvelous. It's been great talking with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much for joining us and for the excellent work that you have underway at the University of Houston. And I'd like to also thank you, our viewers, for watching. This has been Prudential Up Houston. We will see you again next time.